So today is the day, the heads are all cleaned up and we're gonna be going down to the machine shop. My motorcycle will be riding up front with me today. Take the exit, then turn right. I used to do cars, like race cars and, yep. and stuff, and they're paying the ass doing a race car. This is the one that makes a, a tapping noise. Once it starts to heat up, and I put the uh, I put a heavier oil in to mitigate it, but I think it's one of the bushings on the rocker. But because it resonates through, I can't tell which one it is when I listen to it. That's that's convenient. Well, this doesn't have seals on. I thought you said these had seals on. But it does have the low guides, the short guides. I can swear that these, I can swear that these did have the seals on them. The back one's a horror show. Like I said, the front one is just gonna be to, to conform. I might have back then taken your advice on the uh, seals, gone with the gone with the, the shorter valve guides, but not but but taking your advice and not use the seals. Yeah, that could be. That could explain the ex the extra carbon buildup on the uh, on the piston heads. Yeah. But not having that issue that I had. But, but that that makes it all the more interesting when we look at the exhaust valve on the on the rear, which you'll see in when we open up that one. Yep. Valve valve job still looks perfect. Yeah, on this one, yeah, no problem, no problem whatsoever on this one. And this, is, this is a J grind uh, cam, but but uh, I I had taken those measurements to you with the grind cam when we did this, and I was I was surprised these gaskets did hold up uh, pretty good. You know, there, there was some minor uh, leakage that came through these. Yeah. After, after a time, but, but very minor. It has to do with the extreme weather, you know, here. It gets really hot, really cold. There's not a whole lot of heat management on these heads back then. Yeah. But other than that, really no complaints. Like when the engine's cold, it's quiet, but all of a sudden you start hearing a ting, 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 like that. And when I put, when I, when I scope it, you can hear that it's, it, it gets louder in here. And I know it projects through the engine, Yeah. but it, it's, it's definitely up here in the rocker box is the loudest. And I have hydraulic lifters, so that does dampen it to some extent from the bottom of the engine. Yep. You know, with oil, it, it, it flew well, a couple. Your hydraulic lifters with the heavier oil, a lot of times the lifters will pump up. But I may have found the issue right here. See that little spot? I, I can't see with the light. Okay, see that little spot right there? That yeah, I'm I do. To? Yeah, I do. I believe your rocker arm was kissing that. Oh, how do you like that? That's where your tank was coming from. See, this side's completely clean. This side, it would probably, when the valve was all the way up, and how to get around that is you just stem the valve a little bit, and that sets that a little bit further away. And I've seen that quite a bit on uh, shovels because of uh, the ca it's a casting, where the pans were a little more forgiving on that. Yes. You know, they would do it too when the valves were way out of spec, but and then, then they would, the, the old guys used to just double the gaskets. But since this is a, uh, a rocker, the rocker uh, assembly too. What happens is these castings are all just a hair different. So sometimes the casting has a little more slag in there and it creates a little more, you know, closer fit. So even though your valve height was within spec, that it's probably just due to the casting. And there's two ways of fixing it. Take some um, meat out of the rocker box, which is well, you could take a little bit out of there. But I mean, the valves are already out, so I'll just stem the valve about fifteen thousand. Oh, that'd be great! Since we already got the valve out, that would cool. probably yeah. outstanding. Yeah, that way you don't. That way you don't get any metal sheds in here. <clears throat> you know, because these all these these feel pretty good. No, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, these feel in really good shape. Awesome.
Yeah, so 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 good. We took the rocker box open. And there, there's there's something that could be corrected. That that's fantastic. Yeah. And so we're gonna we're gonna crack open this one. We're gonna apply a little bit of heat because I have some 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 Loctite. It's it's the Loctite that you put on after you put on the nut. It's different than regular Loctite. It just heats into the thread. So we're just heating it up to remove that Loctite first. So we're going through each one. Um, important note when you take these off is you want to make sure you don't turn up the studs, right? Because if you turn the studs, number one, you can break the rocker box. Number two, when the stud comes up, if the stud bites into the rocker box, you'll never get them off. Watch your lock tight changing. See it? See it? Uh, there you go. You can see the lock tight burning off the stud. And, and notice the height of the stud that's pressing over the end of the nut. So when you turn the nut off, you want to make sure you don't turn the stud with it. it and if you start to, that's okay, you want to stop, you want to make sure you back down the stud. There's a little bit of grace you get, and then nothing bad will happen. You turn them back down and don't continue. You're not going to get the rocker box off anyway by turning the stud. Make sure it comes back. They don't come up, they get more heat. Yeah. And sometimes they require more heat. You can see this one started to turn up the stud, so we stopped. And we can see that more Loctite is burning off and whipped all the way down. It's a necessary evil. You can't get to these bolts when they start to loosen, when, when the engine's mounted and the rocker boxes come loose and all sorts of terrible things happen. So when it finally makes it into the machine shop, you know, you, you just have a rough time going and getting these nuts loose. It is what it is. All the nuts have finally been removed. Uh, we have marked the ones here that are a bit too tall and we're going to put a, a double nut here like you see and turn them back in. No attempts are going to be remade to split the boxes yet until they can be turned back down. So watch. This is crucially important. I think I stressed out enough, right? That horse <laughs> has been beaten to death. Yep. So now all of the studs are, are lowered back into position. Do you need me to, to tap all your hole to? Yeah. yeah just okay, I'll use, I'll use the Easy going hammer up there. I don't want to hit your fingers. But there it goes. I heard it. Yeah. There we go. So here we are. Did this I don't I didn't hear any taps on this one. Yeah, it's clean. See how it doesn't have the dot? Yeah, I didn't have any of th those such problems on the rear. Yeah. So good. This is this is the problem, child, and the, the problem only extends to the exhaust. So We'll take a look when we get these valves taken apart. Do is we'll, we'll double check and we'll see why um, why the short guys are in there. Custom tools of the trade. Exhaust always takes a beating. Intake's got it good. <laughs> Yeah, rougher train geometry was so bad on these old motors. Well, that's common though with no seals. Okay. Um, the lady who doesn't have a phone Okay. What time We put new guy our uh, new valves in here when we did it. We did. This okay. is all new. New valves, new guides. Okay. Perfect. 
Nothing wrong there, man. I was, I'll tell you what might be happening, and I've seen this happen before. Your crankcase venting, it's building up too much pressure up here and forcing your oil, or your drain back um, was plugged up somehow. You could have had a dab of silicone in it or something. Because what it's doing is it's, it might be building up crankcase pressure. But only on one side? Well, <clears throat> it's possible. I mean, I've seen it before, and usually when it does happen, it's only one head will smoke. So, but, I mean, it mics up perfect. And you can see it's not leaking around the outside of the guide. It's leaking, you know, it's leaking on the inside. Yeah, it's... it's, it's Needs more venting. So it turns out that there's probably <clears throat> nothing wrong with the valve guide or the valve, <clears throat> which which is strange, but it's it's a revelation. Um, and I I'm, think you have a venting issue. And and probably could be a or venting a, issue. Or an oil drain back issue. Yeah, but the, I still I'm still happy that I took them off and, and brought them here anyway because based on what I saw, I had no reason to believe it wasn't a valve guide. You know yeah. that that's the prudent thing to do. Yeah. And the other rocker box definitely did have an issue. Well, if nothing else now that you know it's peace of mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. So so we're gonna we're gonna handle it as such, right? And and proceed onward. So on this side for the uh, front rocker box, a little bit of work was done on this side to to dig out uh, some of the casting over here, as well as some work that was done on the uh, stemming of the valves. So this work got done. I mean, you're so far away from coil bind on this, you should be plenty good. Okay. Those, those springs should last you forever. And now they got the seals in them? Yes, sir. Yeah, if you look down in there, take the flashlight. You can see the seals are in there now. Yeah, look. Everything's nice and clean. Look at that, like brand new. Very nice. Beauty. Look at this. Here's the rear all done up nicely. Uh, this is all cleaned up. Uh, again, it looks just like the other one. It's, it's got the uh, valve guide seals put in, so um, looks just like that. Nice and clean, ready to go back on. Everything's done up real nice. Very happy with the work. Continue working on these rocker boxes here. I'm going to check the height of the studs as they come out of the rocker box, but I already know the height that I'm looking for. It's just in around 60, so I'm going to each one here. And they may be off by a couple again, like I said, it's okay. And I know with this one, I remember, it is just, that one's off by, by one or two. These look okay. This one's off by about three. I don't want them to be too long or too proud sticking out of the box, right? Because then it'll bind on the rocker box. And these two are, are shorter, but I just check the, uh, the actual, make sure that the thread is not sticking out too far. This one looks okay, we're ready to proceed. I note the uh, markings that were left here, right? These are also on the paper that I have, but this is a uh, 1.522, 1.561. I'm gonna clean the mating surfaces right quick. Make sure they're free of any dirt or oil. Just a, a little bit of brake cleaner. find this stud here just just a little proud for my liking I'm going to double nut this stud then I'm just going to to turn it down this will be half inch there we go that's good enough for me I'm gonna bring this one down a hair, just at like a half a turn. That's it. Very nice. Finally, I'm gonna bring this one up, I think a full turn. That should be good. We'll call that good. Very nice. 
Very important thing easily overlooked before this process is begun is simply take a nut and screw it on each one of these and just clear the top and then pull it off. You want to make sure the thread work is good before you begin this process. Make sure you don't have any uh, thread issues. If, if you have to go and uh, fix any of these threads that got damaged uh, during any machine work, right? It only takes a minute. Very good. Ready for gaskets. I'm now cracking open the James kit. This is the unboxing, if you would. Taking out only the gaskets as necessary to do the job. This is the kit that I am using for this task. We can see that this is the one that we'll be pulling for now. They are in fact uh, shrink wrapped to the head gasket, so I will carefully remove this from that. Also the base gaskets are in that package as well. Here they are, I can see some debris on these. I want to make sure that they're clean. I'm gonna go and clean this. Very nice. Make sure that they are uh, symmetrical. We can see that as I flip it over. They are the same on the bottom as they are on top. Why is that important? Because if we know that, it doesn't matter which way we put them on. That should be painfully obvious. So I will lay this gasket down. Make sure it doesn't bind on any of the threads. Take your time. There we go. Gasket's laid on. That's how I do it to ensure when these splines grind here against the aluminum and they may rub into it, that they don't get any metal inside the, the case, especially if you have to lift it up again and do it, that, that it all falls through and lands on the table. You can see it wasn't that hard to get it on, but it doesn't fall right in. More so we could see that all of the studs are the same height above the uh, rocker box. Now I'm just gonna be dropping the washers on and then the nuts. It's important that I'm able to take the nut and tighten it down finger tank like this uh, to full seat. I'm not trying to torque it yet, right? If I can't do this, I'll have to clean the threads of the stud or the nut. If we recall, I, I used the nut before to do this and you could for uh, even better measure use each particular nut for the stud as I had shown before. If not, if you have a severe amount of resistance, if you don't clean out the thread work of the nut, and you have to turn really hard, you may just end up adjusting the stud. It's important that it bottoms out so it pulls the stud uh, slightly to stop it from turning. So again, I'm not trying to tighten them down yet. I'm just trying to get them on, see if they seat fully, just finger tightening very easy like. Stud height looks good on all of these now. I have the uh, washers and the nut on them. All I'm going to do right now is just take out the slack just to see that the, the stud is not moving. That's all I'm doing. You can see the way I'm, I'm holding the, the spanner. I'm not, even, I'm not even putting any strength on it, right? It's just moving very easy. It's also so it doesn't get in the way of the camera. There we go. I'm gonna be doing 145 inch pounds. That's uh, around 12 foot pounds. I'm using an inch pound wrench here. So I'm gonna be starting on the middle studs, working my way outward. And then finally the smaller studs. I'm gonna take some of the slack out of the outer ones, match it up. First one, second one,
Now I bring it to 175, and this is uh, 14 and one half foot pounds. This is what we're going to finish off. And this head is complete. This is done. I'm going to be starting on the next head. I do it just like I did the first one. I did not point out when I did the first uh, head assembly that I do put a, a light amount of oil uh, both here and here on the valve stem end, but I do not put a, a large amount. I do not want it to get on the mating surfaces over here. Finished. Start in back the exhaust bolt and these bolts and washers back to the heads so I do not lose them. So just place them back on as they originally were. So these heads are finished. All I have left to do on these heads are cosmetic work and that's to pull out uh, some of the scratches that were incurred at the machine shop. So we're going to call the head work finished. We're going to close out this video. There's uh, much more videos to come on this uh, shovel head engine rebuild. Uh, so I would like to thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching. Would you like to reply?